So, so this would be uh, based on some work we finished recently uh, with Mike Blake, uh, a postdoc at MIT, and uh, Hans Seok Lee, uh, um, a, a student at MIT. Um, yeah, uh, we just appeared recently. So chaotic phenomena are ubiquitous in nature. Uh, actually, uh, uh, just for my, for my own journey, the coming to Bariloche uh, can be considered as a chaotic motion. <laughs> Uh, uh, actually, uh, there is some kind of butterfly effect there, uh, because the, if one of the representative of, Mar of American Airlines had maybe clicked the button, it then could have saved me 60 hours and, uh, in my journey. So, uh, so suddenly my journey uh, from 18 hours to 70 hours, something like that. So, but. So there are many studies of chaos in the classical systems, dynamical systems, for many, many years. But the characterizations and manifestations at quantum level, uh, it's actually much less understood. But even at the quantum level, it's mostly few body systems. And for many body systems, even, even much less. And uh, so, so most of the time, we say a chaotic system by, by saying what it is not. We say this, uh, some system is not integrable, then we say it must be chaotic. But of course it must, uh, uh, of course it would be nice to have something more positive to say about chaotic system. And one of them uh, is, quite, uh, is called the uh, eigenstate civilization, normally called ETH, uh, which is a very simple statement which said that uh, 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 highly excited energy eigenstate should behave uh, 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 like thermal state. Say if you probe it using some few body operator, and uh, so behave like certain state. And uh, ETH is uh, at conceptual level is actually a very fundamental statement, because it essentially said that actually uh, the quantum chaos lays the foundation for quantum statistical physics, uh, because we do expect quantum statistical physics to apply for I say isolated quantum system, and uh, and ETH could ensure that. But ETH is actually uh, very hard to work with in practice. It's because it works, has to do with the energy eigenstate. Say if you have a system of 10 to the, say, 20, 30 electrons, you find energy eigenstate is highly non-trivial, and normally it's not a very uh, convenient thing to do. And uh, so, so in practice, uh, you mostly uh, 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 study of the ETH, uh, uh, either at conceptual level or, or you just do numerical uh, uh, diagonalization, say, of simple numerical systems, uh, uh, simple quantum mechanical system. So here, I would like to do a slight advertisement that the, uh, but if you work with CFTs, and then the story is different. Because for CFTs, the energy eigenstate then can be mapped to uh, primary operators, uh, and, and then uh, actually you can use the uh, ETH to do uh, uh, to make a lot of progress, for, uh, for example, in compute the uh, quantum information properties, et cetera, and which we have been uh, pushing with the Lima uh, and Ashkari, uh, who is here, and also the mask. And, uh, and there's a lot of advertisements, and uh, uh, recently uh, with the mask, we also have proposed a lot of uh, manifestation, say, of quantum chaos in many board systems, and we claim that the, uh, uh, if you consider uh, a chaotic system, then deviation of that system from equilibrium is actually strongly correlated uh, with energy fluctuations. And, uh, and so, uh, uh, so this uh, slightly generalized this uh, ETH hy hypothesis and the complementary to that hypothesis in various different aspects. But today, actually, uh, my main purpose is to talk about the, uh, uh, a lot of a signature of chaos which has generated lots of excitement recently uh, during the last couple of years. So that's related to this uh, so-called out-of-time ordered correlation function. And uh, so, so, the, so the main object is to look at this commutator square, say, of generic two, four, two few body operators, say, in the thermal state, uh, say, with the inverse temperature given by beta zero. And uh, so it was found in many systems that somehow for chaotic system it behaves uh, uh, exponential, uh, increase exponentially with time, 
So this n, this script n, is essentially the number of degrees. Yeah, it's uh, uh, roughly the number of degrees freedom uh, of the system. And so, uh, and so this exponential behavior applies when the time is between, say, a typical relaxation time and the so-called scrambling time. Yeah. And uh, so, so, what, so the physical picture, uh, so the physics underlying this behavior uh, is normally called scrambling, which can be heuristically understood as follows. So let's, let us imagine that this region inside the circle is the space of all the degrees freedom. And then, then say, uh, uh, then for typical, uh, for typical few body operators, then V, so, typical, so at the initial time, then V and the W, they're just far separated. Yeah, because they're few, or few, body op, few, body op, few body operators. If they're large number of degrees freedom, and then, then they're just typically separated. They, uh, they don't, uh, uh, they, their degrees of freedom don't overlap, uh, overlap with each other. But, but now, so, so now suppose we involve this VT with time, and then as time goes on, this operator becomes more and more complicated because of the Hamiltonian evolution. And eventually, when you reach the, say, scrambling time, and then you cover uh, over all, uh, essentially, uh, uh, this V is scrambled over all the degrees freedom. And now, and then at this time, and then this, uh, yeah, when it's uh, uh, expanding, then, 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 then this CT just grow, and then, then at this scrambling time, essentially, just saturate. Uh, so, so this is a rough intuition uh, behind this behavior. And uh, so more explicitly, what is responsible for this exponential uh, increase is what is so-called out-of-order time correlation function. Is that if you expand this commutator square, then you find actually there are two types of pieces. And one type is that the correlation function, you can put it, say, say in the real time on the contour uh, with only two segments. But there's a lot of uh, piece which actually need four segments uh, uh, to put uh, uh, to put the uh, to, des uh, to describe the time evolution, and it's precisely uh, uh, so. This is normally called the uh, time ordered correlation function, and this is called out of time ordered correlation function. And it's precisely this piece, the behavior of this piece, uh, is responsible uh, for this exponential growth. And also, you can uh, look at the system, say. Uh, 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 Say uh, 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 more than yeah. Say look at the spread in the spatial dimension, some higher dimensional system, and then you can separate these two operators also by some spatial distance. And then here one find in addition to this exponential increase, then actually you find actually there's a ballistic spread, and uh, 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 characterized by some kind of velocity which is normally called the butterfly velocity. And uh, uh, so the whole thing is, yeah is in the real exponential. And also for some systems, or for certain regime, we sometimes also find the exponential increase and uh, surround it by some kind of diffusion, okay? uh, uh, by some kind of diffusion with time. And it's also observed in some uh, weakly coupled system and also in some, um, uh, 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 some uh, uh, crossover, some over, uh, uh, yeah, some, uh, some region uh, of T and X, say, in the, in the SYK kind of system. So here I want to emphasize is that this lambda which characterizes exponential increase, uh, which is normally called the Lyapunov exponent, here uh, uh, is actually proportional to one way h bar. So that means uh, 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 this kind of behavior is intrinsically quantum mechanical, and they don't have a very simple uh, semi-classical limit. And in particular, uh, 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 it's known that this is bounded, uh, this exponent is bounded by, uh, say, by this. Uh, uh, Expression which has appeared already many times. So, so this behavior has now been studied in many systems, holographic and other condensed matter systems, and especially in SYK, uh, uh, which has uh, uh, generated uh, uh, many of the initial studies. But, but so far, all the studies uh, 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 of those behavior, this exponential decay and this kind of ballistic spreading they come through rather complicated model-specific calculations. But even though, in the end, they all got results, which seems to be universal. Okay? Uh, uh, but, the, but so far, the understanding has been through detailed calculations in specific models. Of course, whenever you have this kind of situation, you can't help asking yourself whether there is some kind of unified way to understand this kind of behavior so that you don't have to worry about specific systems. 
And so, uh, so this is what we like to do, uh, 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 I would like to describe in this talk, is that we would like to propose actually a unified description across different systems. And uh, so, so the main idea is that actually uh, uh, in, the, in the limit, when you have a very large number of degrees freedom, uh, scrambling actually allows a collective description uh, using the quantum hydrodynamics. Okay, so, so here is the basic picture uh, I we would like to propose for this scrambling. So, so, uh, so we assume that you actually have a very large number of degrees freedom. And then the proposal is that the time evolution of a typical uh, a field body operator can be written as some, some bare operator which still only contain the original degrees freedom which contained in V and all the growth of this, all the spread of this operator under the Hamiltonian uh, uh, evolution can be described in this limit by some kind of hydro, by some kind of hydro, uh, dynamic cloud dressing. Say, so sigma is some kind of hydrodynamic mode uh, which dries uh, 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 this, your, uh, your bare operator. Yeah, this bare operator. Yeah, in particular, this sigma is some kind of hydro mode associated with energy conservation and which uh, 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 under time, evolution will grow exponentially with time, okay? And uh, yeah, so this is the heuristic picture. You have this V hat T still uh, uh, in, the, in the original set of degrees freedom, but then the spread is through this hydrodynamic cloud, through this kind of dressing, okay? And uh, in particular, the behavior uh, uh, in the uh, uh, out of order time correlation function and the, the time order correlation function then, then can actually be understood in terms of exchange uh, of this hydrodynamic mode. Just exchange uh, 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 this cloud, uh, the overlapping of the cloud uh, between different operators. Okay. Just, uh, so this is the, uh, the basic uh, picture we would like to propose. And uh, this picture, yeah, yeah, in particular I want to emphasize is that the different order of the operator, say for the time order and for out of time order, uh, what, what happens, they give you a slightly different vertices. And the difference in the vertices actually give rise to the exponential behavior in this case, but somehow no exponential uh, growth in, in, the, in the standard, uh, say, the time ordered uh, correlation functions. And so, so actually there have been many clues that there they might be a hydrodynamic picture behind this, uh, 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 this kind of chaos uh, behavior. So, so, so in particular, uh, uh, the picture which I described in the previous slide was largely inspired by, by a discussion of Marcina, Stanford, and Young uh, uh, of the SYK and ADS2. Uh, also, there are some other papers by uh, Kitayev, Jensen, and uh, Kitayev, and Su. Uh, um, so, so firstly, the, uh, uh, so, the, uh, so what they found, uh, uh, these people find, is that in the SYK, and in some uh, series of ADS2, actually there's an effective, low energy effective theory, uh, which is this swathing, uh, which can fully capture uh, uh, this kind of chaotic behavior. And in particular, uh, the dynamic variable of the swathing is ju uh, just time uh, reparameterization. And, uh, and uh, also, if you look at the formulation of the hydrodynamics, Actually, the time reparameterization is precisely the way how you formulate the, uh, the hydrodynamics for the energy conservation, okay? So, uh, so at least uh, 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 you can say, uh, uh, as actually first, first pointed out by Jensen, that the swashing itself is a hydrodynamic theory. And then, so the picture here uh, actually was also implicit in all these SYK calculations. And uh, so here, we just would like to argue that it, it would like to propose actually applies to uh, a much more general series, uh, not just the M uh, uh, SYK type of series. Also, there are many other clues, and another clue is the, um, say in the holography, say the, the, the chaotic behavior and scrambling can be heuristically understood, say you drop a particle into a black hole, and from the uh, per, uh, perspective of the observer at infinity, this particle then just eventually stuck at the uh, stretched horizon and then just absorbed by the stretched horizon. And then, then all the scrambling behavior and, uh, and behavior out of, out of time, all the correlation function can be understood, say, as the back reaction, 
say, of this particle uh, on, the, on the stretch horizon, et cetera. Okay? And uh, uh, of course, the, from the membrane picture of the uh, a black hole, and the, the stretch horizon can precisely understood uh, as some kind of a hydrodynamic uh, uh, a cloud. And so, so in the sense, you can, uh, 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 this picture uh, precisely tells you from field theory point of view, you should view this, par uh, 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 this particle as dressed by some hydrodynamic cloud. And also, in, in many holographic examples and in some non-holographic examples, people found that the butterfly velocity actually uh, are re is related to the thermal energy diffusion constant. And the thermal energy diffusion constant is something you can extract from hydrodynamics. So, so also here give you some hint that there must be some connection. But, but if you try to look at this idea further, then you also see some uh, immediate difficulties. So the first difficulty is that normally hydrodynamics is actually formulated as a derivative expansion. And in particular, uh, because it's formulated derivative expansion, it applies only to time scales much larger than the say, inverse temperature of your system. Okay? And, uh, but, but this Lyapunov exponent is typically uh, precisely off order, uh, uh, can choose the time scale variation uh, precisely off order the beta zero. So, so, uh, so naively, uh, the, uh, the usual hydrodynamics cannot, uh, 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 cannot actually uh, describe uh, the physics at this kind of scale. Okay? So this is one. Uh, uh, uh. And, the, and the second is that the normally hydrodynamics actually formulate in terms of equation motion, but here actually one needs fluctuation. And uh, actually, uh, uh, yeah, because of this kind of spread of these uh, clouds, uh, uh, come as the fluctuation around the thermal, uh, uh, thermal ensemble. So, and also, say if you have some kind of exponential growth in some hydro mode, and then the naively the first thing one should see those exponential growth is the stress tensor, okay, say energy density or energy flux. And then you would expect immediately you would see the, uh, the exponential growth in the, energy, uh, in the stress tensor, and that would mean just your system have uh, instability, okay? So, so that's why we normally say, uh, 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 indeed, in, in, in many situations, when you see uh, 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 experimental growth in the hydro mode, you, uh, uh, that's an indication of instability. And, uh, and thirdly, so the hydrodynamics actually normally describes uh, a response, uh, 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 say nonlinear hydrodynamics describe nonlinear response and the fluctuations. And those response and the fluctuations can typically be captured just by a real-time process on the standard single cartridge counter we have requiring only two, say, segments, okay? But this out-of-time order the correlation function actually requires four segments. So you ask, how can the physics here actually capture this, uh, how the physics of these two segments actually capture the, uh, uh, the physics uh, uh, of these four segments? So, so I would actually like to argue that all these uh, uh, difficulty actually can be addressed. And uh, actually, by addressing these difficulties, give you a very good way uh, to understand uh, uh, qualitatively uh, uh, how how our proposal works. Okay, uh, so that's what uh, uh, so that's uh, uh, what I will do next. So first, from the first point of view, that the, in order to describe in order to describe the variation uh, of time scale controlled by the uh, typically applied exponent, then at least you need the theory to be to be able to. Uh, a probe the time scale of all the beta zero, okay? And uh, it should be able to uh, uh, capture fluctuations. And also, as I said, uh, emphasized earlier, this Lyapunov exponent is intrinsically quantum, okay? So, so you actually need the quantum formulation of hydrodynamics. So, so what this means, actually, you need the fluctuation hydrodynamics, which include all derivatives, and you cannot do derivative expansion, but, uh, but the uh, applicable at the quantum level. And uh, so, so actually such a theory can be, uh, can be formulated uh, uh, from some recent uh, progress. So, so, so first, just a, 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 a few words on the, uh, on the hydrodynamics. So if you consider a generic system at a finite temperature, and then in the, in the generic situation, the only slow mode of the system are those associated with conserved quantities. And use this, using this as a starting point, then you can actually formulate hydrodynamics at, as a quantum effective field theory uh, for those slow modes. For those slow modes, and uh, so our proposal is that the quantum chaos can actually be described by hydro mode associated with energy conservation, which I already mentioned uh, uh, earlier. So, 
so, so because the uh, 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 only energy uh, conservation is relevant for quantum chaos, so for simplicity, uh, 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 for tactical simplicity, I will only consider systems. So I will consider systems with only energy conservation. Okay, uh, energy conservation is the only uh, conserved number. So this includes, for example, zero plus one dimensional quantum mechanics or higher dimensional system with strong momentum uh, dissipation. So, so I don't consider momentum conservation. So, I, uh, so, so you can imagine that the system have some strong, uh, strongly uh, momentum dissipation mechanism so that actually uh, there's no momentum uh, uh, conservation. Okay, and then, and then uh, uh, one can just uh, readily formulate uh, 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 hydrodynamics for the theory with only uh, energy conservation. So, so one way to think about it is just you can think about the system say as a collection of the fluid element, okay? Just uh, it, imagine your theory in some kind of fluid phase and then there is a collection of fluid elements. And then associated with each fluid element, we can uh, uh, associate the intrinsic time uh, 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 with each fluid element. And that depends on your physical time and your, phys uh, and your physical location, okay? Now, a physical location of the fluid element. And so, uh, so this is one of the dynamic variable uh, for this hydrodynamic theory. And, uh, and then there's another variable which we normally, uh, uh, which we call XA, uh, 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 which is the uh, noise variable which conjugate to the energy noise, okay? So, uh, so these are the dynamic variable uh, for this hydrodynamic theory. So, so essentially, the quantum hydrodynamic action then can be written down so as the most general action for sigma and the XA subject to some symmetries and the unitarity constraint. In particular, uh, there's a D2 dynamic KMS symmetry uh, uh, which is crucial uh, to formulate a consistent theory. Okay. So I will not go into detail here. And uh, so, uh, so you can essentially write down the Lagrangian. You just write down the most general uh, theory for, uh, for those variables. And, uh, for, uh, uh, and you can expand them in the, in, in the noise field, uh, for example, in this noise uh, XA. So the first few terms is uh, like this. And so, so these are terms linear in the noise and quadratic in the noise, et cetera. And in particular, uh, the, the coefficient the proportional to the time derivative of the noise ca can be uh, uh, shown is precisely the energy density. And the, the, the coefficient uh, co corresponding to the spatial derivative of the noise uh, actually corresponding to the energy flux. And then, and then there are uh, some other uh, M1, M2, which controls the fluctuation of the noise, et cetera. Okay. And the equation of motion is just essentially uh, it's just energy conservation. Say, say the energy and the flux, uh, the common, yeah, uh, 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 and the noise will be zero. Uh, so this, yeah, uh, 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 so this is just equation motion. And the equivalent configuration just corresponding to sigma equal to T. So you just identify this uh, intrinsic fluid time with, uh, uh, with the, uh, your physical time, okay? And, uh, and the, the deviation from the equilibrium, then you just, uh, yeah, just deviation uh, uh, from uh, 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 T. So, so here, in principle, you can formulate it at all derivative order. You don't have to do any derivative expansion. So H and the GI can be considered as some exact function, okay? And, uh, and so, so they include all derivative orders, and they are non-local to the uh, up to scale of uh, uh, beta zero. Okay. Uh, they're non-local up to scale beta zero. So, so if you look at this theory, uh, you say, oh, how can this theory make any prediction? Because the, uh, uh, they, they, in uh, they in principle contain infinite number of parameters, and uh, essentially they just have some arbitrary functions here. So as we will see, actually, uh, uh, even uh, working with such a seemingly looking uh, a monster, actually one can make uh, 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 precise predictions. So, so now I want to pre uh, propose, so this is a, a formulation of a hydrodynamics for any system, okay? Uh, for any system with energy conservation. So now I want to propose a subset of theory which applies to the uh, chaotic system. And uh, so the basic idea is that we propose that the chaotic system, say with the Nyapolov exponent lambda, can, a can actually be described by a theory uh, of the form we discussed before, but with additional symmetry. Okay, uh, so, so, the, uh, so the chaotic uh, hydrodynamics corresponding to the standard hydrodynamics, we just impose additional symmetry. It, it, it's actually more symmetric. So, so to, to, to see this symmetry, I will introduce a new variable. So the, uh, remember, this sigma is my dynamic variable corresponding to the fluid time. So I introduce a new variable which is given by u, say exponential minus lambda sigma, okay? And, uh, and I will not go into detail uh, where this explanation comes from, just mention that this is actually inspired by the holography. 
And then, so what we will require, say for example, if you have a zero plus one dimensional system, we just require the Lagrangian to be invariant on the constant shift uh, 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 of this new variable, okay? Yeah, a constant uh, shift new variable, so we call it the shift signature. So, and then you can show, actually, the, uh, 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 if you write down the most general theory, satisfy this shift symmetry, and then you truncate to the lowest non-dissipative and the lowest derivative sector, and then you find you actually precisely recover the swazin. Uh, 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 yeah, you just re uh, recover swazin. So, so swazin for SYK and S2, just a special example of this class of series. Oh, only five minutes? Okay. Yeah, but you told me you're a generous uh, 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 chair. <laughs> Good. So what does this uh, uh, shift symmetry do? Is that you can just by invert this function, it said tells you that if, tells you that any perturbation of sigma from the equilibrium of this form is actually a solution of equation motion. So, so this symmetry, what this symmetry does is guarantee that deviation from equilibrium allows an a, a exponentially growing solution, okay? And uh, so at a higher uh, dimension, you can also impose a similar uh, shift symmetry, but it's more complicated. And so let me just mention the simplest possibility is that you actually impose uh, 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 a, a point-wise shift symmetry. And so this shift now can depend on the arbitrary spatial coordinate, but not depend on time, okay? Good, so now you can look at the, uh, the behavior of this theory under this shift symmetry. So, so the consequence of this shift symmetry is that first the, 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 the energy and energy density are invariant because they appear in your Lagrangian as the coefficients. So if you impose that the Lagrange is invariant on the shift symmetry, then they are invariant. And in particular, that means that both H and the GI, they can be written as the partial T minus lambda. So lambda is the, the of experiment acting on, say, uh, 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 something else involving sigma. Okay, so they, they must always contain this factor. So what this means is that if you look at the two-point function, thermal two-point function of the deviation from the equilibrium of this hydrogen mode, uh, remember the, sigma, uh, the epsilon is defined to be the deviation from the, uh, uh, from the equilibrium. And then you find because of this behavior, actually there's a pole in the upper half plane precisely sitting at omega equal to lambda, okay? And, uh, and so this is precisely this pole in the upper half plane which give you rise to this kind of exponential growth uh, in, the, in, the, in the sigma. Uh, and then uh, uh, writing more explicitly, and then you find actually uh, the Fourier transform. Yeah, if you write this as a Fourier transform uh, in momentum space, and then you find that there's some kind, yeah, there's a pole in the upper half plane, and then you have this kind of structure uh, which is some kind of generalized diffusion operator. Uh, so this is a general uh, function of omega and k. Uh, 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 so, uh, so it turns out if you evaluate this integral, say using the, uh, uh, using the uh, counter integration, and then you find that this integral generically actually gives rise to this behavior. Uh, 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 so the exponential behavior just comes from the pole in the upper half plane. And then this kind of behavior then just gives rise to this, uh, uh, then the overlap, then the interplay of this kind of uh, uh, behavior and the, with the uh, pole in the upper half plane just uh, always give you uh, generically give you this uh, a ballistic spread uh, in the uh, 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 butterfly, uh, uh, a kind of uh, spread. And this VB square butterfly velocity is the lambda times some constant, which can be determined from this uh, diffusion operator, okay? But now, in some very special case, then the, then the flux, energy flux is actually some constant times the derivative of the uh, energy density. So in such kind of special case, and then you actually find that then the, this uh, constant become equal to the energy diffusion constant. So, so that's precisely the case which is observed, say, in some holographic examples and in, in some SYK chains. And also, for some other systems, then it's possible, and uh, again, just from this kind of integral, you, uh, you also find that this kind of behavior, say, exponential growth, and then surrounded by uh, diffusion, okay, surrounded by diffusion. Good. And, uh, and so, so all the chaos behavior people have found, say, in various different models, in various different theories, they can all be captured 
just by this uh, two-point functions. Uh, this appear in the two-point functions of this uh, 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 hydro mode. So, so now we, we can answer the second question. Because the energy density and the energy flux are invariant on the shift symmetry, and the, and the expansion modes are a consequence of the shift symmetry. So that means actually the, uh, the energy density and the flux actually uh, uh, cannot see the expansion growing mode. Okay? So despite the existence of the, exposure, uh, the expansion the growing modes, and the, uh, they are invisible to the energy density and energy flux due to that symmetry. So the same symmetry guarantees that energy density and flux don't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are on the two-point function of the fundamental hydro mode, but uh, uh, but the energy density are some composite operator acting on the hydro mode, and then then turns out that that, uh, that operator acting on hydro mode will will get rid of this expansion behavior, uh, uh, and that's guaranteed by the symmetry. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, but since I'm giving a chaotic talk, uh, uh, maybe time can also be a little bit chaotic. Good, 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 good. So, so, yeah, but actually, you can actually make predictions. Not, not only you can say that energy flux are invisible under the, uh, 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 invisible to them, actually you can make some predictions. And then you find, uh, if you look at the, the uh, say, retarded green function of the density perturbation around the equilibrium, then you find actually the shift symmetry and dynamical KMS symmetry imply that this uh, a retarded green function for the energy density have the following structure. Now, this pole, previous in the downstairs, now going to the upstairs. So now you have this structure. So previously you have this times this one, but now, but now for the energy density, this one goes to the upstairs. And the same, then the same mechanism, yeah, so, so, uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, so this just tells you, say, if you go to small omega and k, uh, you will just find the diffusion pole and then the, uh, from the small omega and k behavior of this uh, 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 operator D. And but now if you look at the, the general behavior, the general omega and k, you find that the precisely the same mechanism which gives rise between the interplay of the two, which gives rise to this ballistic uh, 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 butterfly uh, propagation and it tells you that if you follow this diffusion pole to find the omega and the k along imaginary k, you find actually precisely at this value, and the, uh, uh, the pole is skipped. Okay, uh, so here is a picture. So you have this diffusion pole at the small k and the omega, and uh, and this dash the nine uh, uh, give you this uh, 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 behavior. But now, if you follow this pole along the imaginary k axis, then you see a pole line. But then precisely at this value of omega and k, which are related to the Apollo exponent and the butterfly velocity, and you find that this, at this particular location, the pole is skipped because of cancellation between the upstairs and downstairs. Uh, uh, because upstairs, you have a zero. Okay, uh, uh, upstairs has zero. So, uh, uh, so, so this hydrodynamics actually predict you actually have a pole skipping phenomenon, uh, a pole skipping phenomenon. So this phenomenon actually was already implicit in some previous work. Uh, for example, for SYK chain, uh, uh, if you look at the, the paper of uh, Gu and Chi and Stanford, and the, uh, uh, if you analytically continue the, the Euclidean answer there, uh, and then you find the retarded green function uh, uh, given by this form, and precisely at the structure uh, predicted by hydro in particular, and you see this post skipping phenomenon. And also, there's a recent paper by Grostanov and uh, uh, et al, uh, uh, which when they numerically track the hydro pole in the energy energy correlation function, and again they find that the uh, the pole uh, to them uh, the pole just mysteriously skipped uh, at the point which uh, uh, I mentioned. Okay, so now let me just quickly wrap up the four point function, and as I mentioned that the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the operator grows can be considered as the bare operator dressed by some hydrodynamic cloud. And now you can just write down the most general way, parameter the most general way this bare operator coupled to this cloud, and, uh, and you can just expand, uh, say, say, in the linear equivalent behavior. So the so leading order would be linear in epsilon and the, uh, epsilon squared, et cetera. Thanks. And, and then you can parameterize the most general coupling between them. Uh, you can parameterize the most general coupling between them, and then the core operator say, say they don't interact. And, Etc. Anyway, so, so now you can just apply 
this to, to those four point functions. And then what you find is that precisely because that this growth is given by the core operator, uh, this bare operator with this hydrodynamic dressing, and the bare operator they don't talk to each other. And then you find this four point function just reduce to the uh, correlation function of the bare operators, and then the two point function of those sigmas, uh, of those epsilons. So that reduce this four point function, uh, actually just reduce to the two point function uh, of the uh, hydro mode, uh, to the two point function of the hydro mode. And anyway, uh, so if you now uh, impose the, uh, uh, let me just quickly, now if you impose that this uh, interaction vertex also invariant on the shift symmetry, and then you find that for the time order, the correlation function, the pole, uh, uh, the exponential mode, again, just invisible. Uh, but for the, for the other order, the correlation function and, uh, and the exponential survives, and all this behavior I mentioned before, for the, for the uh, sigma, they just appear in those uh, out of order correlation function. So let me just summarize. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, let me just, yeah, just say uh, here, uh, uh, in addition, say we give some system independent description of chaotic behavior, uh, we also have some predictions. And in particular, this post skipping phenomenon may be considered as a smoking gun for the hydrodynamic origin of chaos. And then, yeah, okay, yeah, we stop here. The relationship between hydro and chaos and the SYK and gravity seems like something special. So are you, are you really saying that that's true in general? Or, that, or is this assumption about the shift symmetry, that this assumption about the shift symmetry seemed like the magic input. So when is that true? Is that, is that supposed to be true in general if the system is chaotic or just in the SYK and gravity type theories? Or? Yeah, I would, pro, uh, uh, I would like to propose, this is a, a general thing, this is an emergent symmetry, uh, emergent loner symmetry, uh, 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 yeah. Always. This is a proposal. One last question while Misha is setting up. So in general, the system, uh, a system may have multiple Lyapunov exponents. Is there a way to generalize this theory? Oh, yeah. The multiple exponents? Right, right. Uh, you can just put the more poles there. Uh, put the more poles in the upper half plane. But each pole should be controlled by a symmetry, because otherwise that would destroy everything. So, 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 so the key is that you can have poles appear in the upper half plane as far as that is controlled by some symmetry. Yeah, any accidental poles uh, in the upper half plane would correspond to instability. Okay, let's thank Hong.